Hi guys and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marcel, we have quite the plethora of stuff to get through to today. So let's get cracking on, shall we, as we have quite a bit of news from Intel. And the first of which is actually a Intel roadmap which shows their plans for, well, the future, of course. And obviously on this roadmap, which will be showing on screen, of course, you will see the Coffee Lake S refresh, which we know an awful lot about, of course. And on there is, you know, 8, 6, 4 and 2 core, 95 watts K, 65 watts and 35 watts LGA. But we also see Glacier Falls, which has Cascade Lake X. And interestingly enough, you might spy something down the bottom of Basin Falls. Apparently we're going to be seeing a Basin Falls refresh in October 2018, if indeed this roadmap is correct. Now, of course, it all looks very official. I'm not saying it's fake or anything, but it could be outdated. You know, perhaps that information is no longer correct, or it could, of course, be entirely true. As for Cascade Lake, unfortunately, the roadmap doesn't really have a lot to say there, just, you know, to be decided. Basically, we just know that that it is a thing that exists but the very last thing that you will see down the bottom there is Skylake X which is going to be the infamous 28 core that Intel did show us at Computex 2018. So it's going to be very interesting to see what we actually see with the actual performance of that particular chip after all the accusations and stuff that were flying around at the time but unfortunately no release window or anything like that for this we just know that yes it is on the roadmap that is it going to be a Skylake X processor essentially. Now another thing I do want to highlight with Basin Falls is it is apparently going to be retaining the X299 chipset so we are going to be seeing backwards compatibility for this particular chip of course that is something that Intel have been criticized for their lack of backwards compatibility with their motherboards and especially with AMD really pushing how you don't have to upgrade you can just stick with your AM4 motherboard you know may not have certain features features that newer motherboards have but your processor will work with BIOS updates and all that sort of stuff so it is nice to see Intel kind of correcting that with this at least. Now one thing I haven't mentioned the elephant in the room as it were from this roadmap is of course the 9900K the i9 that we've been hearing so much about over the last few weeks. Now, there were some rumours that, that this chip was delayed, but apparently that is not the case according to this roadmap. It is going to be releasing in September again if this roadmap holds true. So we're going to be seeing the i9-9900K, the i7-9700K, the i5-9600K and i5-9400 all coming this quarter. So again, there were rumours floating around to the contrary, but this roadmap has basically put those rumours to bed and said, nope, it is going to be coming out in September as was originally forecast. Now I just want to say that this, that particular confirmation actually comes from a different leak from X the fastest and there is going to be or would have been should I say a different screenshot showing on screen for that. So yeah go check out the link to X the fastest in the description below this video it will be there for your perusal but this isn't the only Intel rumor that I have for you today. So I don't mean to say rumor I meant piece of news the next one is actually a confirmation from MSI regarding the 9000 series which of course does tie rather nicely into what we were just discussing. Now again backwards compatibility has definitely been a topic of much renown I guess you could say with the upcoming 9000 series of processors whether or not older motherboards are actually going to be able to support them again due to the issues that Intel has in this regard or has had should I say but MSI have officially confirmed that yes Z370 motherboards are going to be able to support the 9000 series now I do have an official statement here from MSI so I'm just going to read it out MSI the world leading gaming motherboard manufacturer is pleased to announce new BIOS updates for MSI Z370 motherboards to support Intel 9000 processors the new BIOS updates are fully optimized for Intel 9000 processors. Updated BIOS versions for MSI Z370 motherboards are shown as below. Make sure to download the Z370 motherboard updated BIOS version for Intel 9000 processors optimization. So long story short, yes, at least when it comes to MSI, we are going to be seeing the 9000 series supported. This does actually tie into previous rumors that we have seen, where we've seen support listed in you know, code and that sort of thing with other manufacturers. So it is nice to see an official confirmation, pretty much hot on the heels of this roadmap, that yes, we are going to be seeing some backwards compatibility for this particular processor, and of course, the previous motherboard generation. So 
thumbs up from me and tell that is definitely something you have corrected obviously amd have very much told them in that regard that look you know if you can do this why wouldn't you it just makes your customers happy and you know if you, you can add extra features to the other boards and make it more i guess an incentive based thing like oh yeah but if you don't get the new motherboard you won't get x y and z and of course you can go see our old ryzen videos that we did a while ago now as to the impact that the new series of motherboards for Ryzen at least has on these boards. And I would assume at least if, assuming we do get our hands on a 9000 series chip for launch, again, that does depend on what we are given or lend, I suppose is the better word, that we would probably do something similar for these boards as it's definitely something that's going to be on a lot of people's minds, I think. So we're going to move away from Intel finally after quite some time spent in Intelville and we're going to move over to Nvidia as they have unveiled something rather interesting when it comes to ray tracing as they have released the very first documentation for temporal anti-aliasing with ray tracing. So this is an evolution of adaptive temporal anti-aliasing that incorporates real-time ray tracing, or at least the low light count method that NVIDIA implemented with RTX. So for those of you in the know will probably recall that there are, is a little bit of a performance challenge when it comes to TAA in high frame rates, and obviously in gaming itself it can have an impact. Obviously, for non-gaming things such as cutscenes and so on, there is no such restriction for this technology, but when it comes to actual gameplay, it does have a bit of a sort of caveat to come with it. So, just to kind of put into context here as to what this new technology is actually going to bring to the table, well, this new tech, which again is ATAA, or Adaptive Temporal Anti-Aliasing, which again does make use of RTX ray tracing, is going to, or at least promises, a image quality comparable to that of 8x super sampling at a cost of 33 milliseconds of frame delay. Now there is something to keep in mind here, these numbers were promised when being tested on a Titan V, so not exactly a cheap GPU being tested there, but still, that is fairly minimal. Now, of course, this does not mean that you're going to be seeing this tech in games anytime soon. He's not exactly going to just appear in your games like, Hi, I'm ATA. Nice to meet you. Hope we get to know each other real well. Unfortunately, it is going to take a while for it to kind of percolate down to us. Obviously, a lot of this comes down to developers actually getting their hands on the technique, you know, practicing it, trying to implement it, seeing how it actually works, not only for their particular engine, because the engine this was tested on was Unreal Engine 4, by the way, but obviously, you know, can they get it to run well? It obviously, develop, depends on the developer's skill set, how much time they have, the budget, all that sort of stuff that always comes into how much sort of cool stuff they can cram into this game, especially when obviously they've got to worry about, you know, does the game work? Does it run? Is that quest broken? Is that quest uh, bug fixed rather, should I say? So it's going to be a few months, I think, before we see Hayden or hear of this, but it is still rather interesting. Now, in the description below this video, you will see a PDF that NVIDIA themselves have released. So I'm just giving you the cliff notes here. If you want to go read it, you know, perhaps you're on a little light bedtime reading, go give that a look-see as it will be there for your perusal. And it'll give you the real nitty gritty as to what is going on here. So we're going to end things up today with a visit to the mobile segment of the technology world and we actually have a new Kirin SoC. Now this is being worked on by the company High Silicon which is owned by Huawei. Now I never know if I'm not pronouncing that right but I'm sure you guys will let me know if I'm not. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're actually working on a new Kirin 980 SoC which is going to have a new CPU, NPU and GPU and is going to be likely found in the next Android flagship which is according to what we know at least the Mate 20 series and the Mate 20 Pro variants. Now for those of you wondering where this information actually comes from, it comes from a very well-known leaker by the name of Ice Universe and according to them the Kirin 980 SoC is going to make use of TSMC's 7nm node. And they may recall that the other day there was a report that Qualcomm were going to be making use of this very same node for the Snapdragon 855 so it is rather interesting to hear that apparently this same company has been thinking, thinking rather in a similar vein. As for the GPU it is actually going to be an ARM GPU again if this holds water. It is going to be the ARM Mali G72 MP24, which is a rather nice upgrade versus the GPU that we saw in the Kirin 970, which powered the Mate 10 and P20 series. Now, if you keep your ear to the ground with all things mobile, you will know that there was an earlier report surfacing that the 980 is going to have an octa-core CPU with a quad-core cluster of clock speeds up to 2.8 gigahertz 
and Cortex A77 for performance delivery. Now this is likely going to be A76, not A77. You know, that's those who are fairly close together on the keyboard. I'm sure you guys can guess as to what actually happened there, but apparently that is going to be what we are seeing. Now it won't be too long before we find out how true this report actually is, as apparently Huawei are going to be unveiling this at the end of the month at an event in Germany. So all we have to do is wait and see, and if we don't see this, then well, we know that this report has been correct. But I would not be surprised to see this there. Maybe not all the information is 100% correct, perhaps it's slightly outdated, all that sort of stuff, but I would not be surprised to see it there. But again, we only have to wait and see, my friends, to see how true this actually is. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.